When Steven Pinker referred to music as auditory cheesecake, he generated quite a stir in the world of cognitive psychology. He was referring to the theory that music is a meaningless byproduct of natural selection, a possibly wasteful use of our brain's resources that, although delightful, contributes nothing to the species' evolutionary trajectory. In this video we'll have a look at seven theories on why we evolved to love music. Researchers have invested a substantial amount of time and effort seeking to develop an explanation for the amount of time and energy that individuals spend listening to and playing music from the standpoint of evolution. As we continue to reveal our biography of the great musician and engineer Tom Scholz, we have created a list of some of the most fascinating concepts made to explain why individuals have such a deep love for music. Before we begin our video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you enjoy watching it. Number 1. To get the girl. What is it that leads anyone anywhere? Why do humans construct things like bridges and airplanes? Tonight, I was expecting to have several sexual encounters. This fantastically twisted thought process belongs to Jack Donaghy, a character on NBC's 30 Rock. He is responsible for this revelation. Darwin's theory of sexual selection is founded on a philosophy that is conceptually similar to this one. Men listen to music for the same purpose that they flex their muscles, take showers, or even get out of bed in the morning, to attract women. Darwin was quoted as saying, Primitive man most likely first employed his voice in making authentic musical cadences as do some of the gibbon apes at the present day, and we may conclude that this capacity would have been notably exercised during the wooing of the sexes. The ethnographic data is often cited by researchers who are in favor of this view. For instance, the anthropologist Bronislaw Malinowski saw a well-known singer among the indigenous people of the Trobriand Islands which are located in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of New Guinea. According to Malinowski, he was no less well-known for his success with the women than he was for any other aspect of his job. Just like the willow, vulva, the neck is a lengthy channel, and the two are attracted to one another. Okay, that settles it. Although this is a fascinating hypothesis to consider, it does not actually explain the popularity of female musicians like Lady Gaga, Joni Mitchell, or any other female artist. Number 2. To keep in sync. When you walk with another person, do you ever find that your footfall begin to match up with theirs? If so, have you ever given it any thought? Our ancestors unconsciously felt a desire to walk in rhythm, and this urge had an evolutionary purpose for them. When we walk, we produce noise. That presented a challenge for early human beings. The sound of footfall might possibly cover over the sound of a dangerous animal or other noises that indicate danger in the area. It is possible that our ancestors learnt to coordinate their steps in order to make predictable noises as a group, which improved their capacity to discern rhythms that were coming from the outside world. Some researchers in the field of science believe that this may have been a key factor in our capacity to feel the rhythm while listening to music. Number 3 to identify your tribe. The majority of sporting events start out with a song. The majority of sports teams have fan chants that they utilize to show their allegiance to the team. The adaptionist idea of evolutionary musicology suggests that when these fans howl in the woods, they may be doing the same thing as coyotes do when they howl in the woods, which is preserving their position as members of the pack. Edward Hagen, an anthropologist, and Gregory Bryant, an evolutionary psychologist, have both put up the idea that music may play a role in the process of recognizing and preserving the coherence of social groups. This hypothesis proposes that music might have originated via coordinated territorial defense signals, which are seen in a wide variety of social animals, such as chimpanzees and coyotes. The findings of a research in which participants' evaluations of a song's quality were altered by manipulation of its musical synchronization provide support for the point that Hagen and Bryant are making. The findings provide credence to the hypothesis that feelings of intergroup affinity are correlated with the quality of music. In a nutshell, the evolution of the human brain has led us to assume that a group that plays music together will remain together. Number 4 to maximize flow. 
This point of view on the development of music is going to make sense to you if you have ever gotten lost on the dance floor or passed up a green light because you were singing along too much. Gary Marcus, a cognitive psychologist and one of Steven Pinker's former students, concurs with Pinker's viewpoint that music serves no purpose from an evolutionary perspective. Marcus states in his book Guitar Zero, the new musician and the science of learning that there does not seem to be any unique brain module dedicated to music, as one would anticipate if music had been precisely tuned by natural selection. People do not participate in the arts because it is beneficial for their genes, they do it against their genes, said one researcher. People do it because it is good for their genes. Marcus contends that throughout the course of time, brilliant musicians have refined their grasp of what makes human beings tick, essentially reverse engineering the human mind in order to maximize the pure delight that music provides. This has occurred in lieu of sexual selection. Eventually, musicians acquired a taste for what psychologist Sixent Mihaly Mihai coined flow, which is a blissful state of absorption in which one loses all sense of time. Eventually, musicians developed a taste for flow. In a nutshell, this hypothesis proposes that the skill of making music developed through time in order to tickle the brain in certain ways. Number 5. To feel emotions. Both music and language have a great deal of similarities. Both of these are examples of indefinitely generating systems, as Gary Marcus explained to us. If you memorize a limited amount of words, you will be able to construct an unlimited number of phrases. Marcus also pointed out a significant difference between the two, music is far more emotionally charged than words. There is a theory among some scientists, not Marcus, that music and language sprang from a similar music-language ancestor, and that music developed to manage emotional meaning while language evolved to handle referential meaning. Marcus is not one of these scientists. It is possible that this is the reason why music is substantially more popular than poetry, we are more at ease experiencing emotions when words are matched to music. Number 6. To intimidate predators. After leaving the safety of the trees, our evolutionary predecessors were confronted with a new sort of danger in the form of ground-based predators. Doctor. Joseph Jordania, an evolutionary musicologist, hypothesizes that rhythmically well-organized loud noise, the precursor to choral singing, was initially developed in the African savanna as a means of intimidating large ground predators. This was likely done in order to protect humans from being eaten by these large ground predators. In addition, Jordania believes that the constant, repeated pattern may have had some sort of hypnotic effect on the whole group which would have helped them fight together against a shared foe. Number 7. Survival of the Funkiest. This one is new out of the oven, but there are some intriguing things to think about with it. Why cannot the theory of evolution by natural selection describe human culture if it can explain the biological world of animals, plants, and other organisms? This is the concept underlying the initiative known as Darwin Tunes, in which participants are tasked with choosing songs and mating them with other tunes in order to produce music offspring. If the children are chosen by other players, then they are said to survive, and the species of music continues to exist. The project is based on the notion of cultural evolution, which is the concept that individuals copy cultural objects from one another, including language, melodies, and pictures. This idea forms the basis of the project. There is a mutation that occurs in an artifact whenever it is copied. Most perish, but some are successful. These win out in the end as the winners of cultural development because they catch on and become successful. There are numerous important similarities that may be made, even if artificial evolution is not precisely the same as natural evolution. For instance, it would seem that both natural evolution and cultural evolution go through periods of punctuated equilibrium. In the same way that a species may sometimes go through phases of rapid evolution, artistic and musical styles may go through periods of innovation, which are then followed by periods that are more stagnant and traditional. You will have the opportunity to compete in survival of the funkiest here. Let us know in the comment section what do you think of this video. Leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.
Don't forget to hit the notification bell for future videos.